Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today I wanted to try the Bonehorn Dracosaur outside of a dedicated dinosaur deck and the red black midrange seemed like a natural inclusion. The Dracosaur, a powerful 5 mana 5-5 five five with flying and first strike, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, exile the top two cards of our library. We may play them this turn. If we exile the land card, we get to make a 3-1 dinosaur creature token. If we exile a non-land card, we get to make a treasure token, and we could potentially do both, which is the dream. So yeah, the Drancosaur can close out the game in just a few attacks while generating an army of dinosaur tokens, generating extra card advantage, and also making extra mana in the form of treasure tokens. So it kind of does it all. But of course in Standard, which can be a ruthless format, it's not always easy to have our 5-drop stick around. So we want to try and support the Drancosaur with a game plan that has a lot of early interaction. So we can kind of trade one for one with the opponent for a while until we can hopefully stick our Drancosaur and leverage it to win the game. And to help protect the Drancosaur, I'm also playing a few discard spells here with Pilfer to take away answers to the Drancosaur and some of our other threats. And then another win condition is going to be Shieldred to help gain life against aggro and then eventually drain the opponent to death as well. So it doesn't even need to attack to be effective, which is also a common theme with the Drakosaur. If you're facing, let's say, a Wandering Emperor, you can just leverage the ability on Drakosaur and Shieldred without needing to tap them into a Wandering Emperor's minus two. And then I'm also trying four copies of Preacher, a three mana, two four with Death Touch, and it can also provide extra cards if we have a higher life total than the opponent when it attacks. Otherwise, we get to make a life linking vampire token, which can also help out against aggro. And then our final card draw engine is Phyrexian Arena, which can also pair quite nicely with Shieldred, as we'll get to gain two life after losing one to the Phyrexian Arena to draw an extra card each turn. So that can also be very nice in the grindier matchups. And then I'm playing quite a few sweepers to catch back up against aggro, including four copies of Brotherhood's End to deal three to each creature and each Planeswalker. So you won't see me play with any creatures that easily die to roam Brotherhood's End, or any Planeswalkers for that matter. And then occasionally we can also destroy artifacts with mana value three or less. And then I'm also trying two copies of Hidatsugu Consumes All, which will start by destroying each non-land permanent with mana value one or less. So it can also deal with a bunch of one drops out of the aggressive decks, and then eventually exile all great yards and transform into vessel of the all-consuming as an extra win condition so this is also a versatile sweeper in a lot of matchups and then taking a look at some of our cheaper cards lots of spot removal four copies of cut down still remains one of the better one mana answers and then at two mana we've got go for the throat We've got a mix of Shieldra's Edict at Insta Speed, and then the new Molten Collapse, which can deal with both creatures and planeswalkers. Occasionally, we can also enable Descent and get the extra ability. And then I'm also running one Iron Crag as a ramp card to maybe play a turn three Shieldred or turn four Drancosaur, which is also pretty fun. And then uh, besides our three mana sweepers, I'm also running one Gix's Command, which can also destroy small creatures. We can make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature on top of it, occasionally get creatures back from our graveyard or give us two plus one counters and a lifelink until end of turn. And then the mana base also got a pretty significant upgrade and the Lost Caverns. Finally, we've got a red-black creature land, Restless Vents, turning into a 2-3 with Menace that can uh, discard a card and draw. So that can also help get rid of some of our useless removal spells in control matchups or just dig for whatever we need in specific matchups. And it can also gain us additional life with a Shieldred in play, which is pretty nice. And then a few more red-black dual lands. Not playing too many cliffs since we don't want our fourth and fifth lands to come into play tapped. And then we've got the uh, Crucible and to ban admire to offer additional utility as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a keepable hand double preacher survives their own brotherhood's end and play a tapped vents for now put on blue whites looks to be maybe more aggressive but it's hard to tell i guess it might be control So far, nothing from our opponents. And I get lost, so it does point towards control. At least we've got our creature lane to discard our less useful cards. And it looks like a blue-white control deck with kind of the mill finish of Mindbreaker. Pilfer could come in handy. I think I cast that next turn, maybe before our opponent gets a chance to play Wandering Emperor. And then for now just play Preacher and Explore. 
Need to get the ball rolling on the threats. Shielder's not bad either. So they're missing the triple blue to an Earth Mindbreaker. Okay. So now we have to decide if we want to pilfer or play Shieldreds. If our opponent's holding a sweeper like Sunfall, then committing Shieldreds is maybe not the best. So let's start by attacking. And then if they play Emperor to Exile Preacher, so be it. But we might draw into something relevant that changes our play. And if they do go for Emperor, then I don't feel too bad playing Shieldred. So, yeah, let's go for it. I guess with her opponent being at 21 from Mending, they are at a higher life total, so we don't actually get to draw. That's okay, let's check out their hand. Alright, so they've got Double Sunfall, Revelry, Absence, and Jace. Well, Jace is what's going to kill us in combination with the Mindbreaker, but Double Sunfall and Absence is going to be difficult to fight through. Still probably go for Jace. And then I'm not going to explore when we know about Sunfall. Bone can flash back Mending. So our creature lands are going to be important. Okay, so... What does our opponent have here? Possible they picked up Wandering Emperor, especially if they discarded another one. I think we still are okay animating a Restless Vent since we have another one. And if they want a Fateful Absence there, that's okay. And then see where we're at. Right, that's what happens. So we can float the mana here and then sack the clue token. And then we both get to make a token and draw cards since we're at even life totals. And uh, yeah. Don't think we're gonna do anything else when we know about uh, Sunfall. Could cut down my own token just to shrink down the incubator. Down to a 2 2 instead of a 3 3. Doesn't seem super relevant. Can always use Brotherhood's End to destroy artifacts. Okay, Molten Collapse actually is a way to get rid of an Incubator token. I don't think that's the play. Instead, uh, we could play Shieldred, run into another Sunfall. Or we can attack with Vents, discarding a Cutdown. At least we've got one Preacher in the Graveyard, so that one we can get back with Gix's Command. Yeah, I don't mind the Vents activation, and then we can explore onto it as well. Don't need that one. Cut down can go. And so our opponent's gonna maybe unearth Mindbreaker now. So now Gix's command's got plenty of targets. This will eventually exile all graveyards. Would also hit the Mindbreaker eventually. Uh, opponent can mill us for another 10 next turn and then a top deck Jace is lethal. Probably time to deploy a Shieldred now. And then... Yeah, this is awkward, because if we choose to destroy a non-creature non-land permanence, they can activate it and then it's no longer a non-creature non-land permanent. So there's Sunfall number two. And 
Okay, so let's see here. We could consume all, but then our graveyard's going to be gone before we get to Gix's command. So I think we do want to command here, getting back. Could go for Dracosaur, although that's a little risky in the face of a mill deck. But it does still apply a significant amount of pressure. So it could go for Dracosaur and Shieldroot, for instance. And then uh, next turn we could consume all, plus maybe play Shieldroot. How worried are we about taking lethal? I guess your opponent can hit us for 10 next turn, down to 4. Yeah, I think that's fine. I guess one thing I could have done is to destroy their 3-3 incubator with a Molten Collapse, and then if they animate it, we get it with Gix's command, since one of the modes is going to go unused. So now our opponent animates the Incubator. Mindbreaker gets unearthed. So yeah, Chase is lethal. Opponent keeping their Incubator back, so they're not on the damage plan. Well, we've got two threats. Opponent has two cards in hand, which could include more removal. And I guess we also have events we can activate eventually. Don't want to commit both threats at once, but don't even have the mana for it. So how about we try shield it and then we can consume all to deal with our tokens or brother roots and I guess would work. Since we don't need to deal with the graveyard right away, although this will eventually turn into a creature as well, which can have its advantages. Could also go Dracosaur plus consume all. I guess that's fine. So we've got eight cards left. Dracosaur's ability is gonna exile the top two cards. So that's gonna speed up the process. And depopulate will wipe the board. And now we get to exile graveyards. Well, we've got a shield red left, and we can animate vents to attack. Don't think the life gain's gonna matter, so I'm gonna attack first and then maybe play shield red. See if they wanna take this out. Well, Frex and Arena would normally be good against control, but when we're at six cards left, it's a little sketchy. That opponent had a Nigancho remaining. So that's down. Play Shieldred. And hope we can uh, attack with it a few times. Ravelry also triggers Shieldred at least. And we had fewer life points. Our opponent actually takes two. And we've got uh, Brotherhood's End to clear the 1-1 one, one tokens pretty easily. Although that would also deal with our Consumes All. So instead we could just double Molten Collapse. And take it from there. And hope they don't have a Wandering Emperor left. Opponent's down to three. They're gonna fall to one in a second. Do I play Frex and Arena? At this point, might as well. If they find a Jace, we lose regardless. Opponent's down to one. Can they find an answer? Just a land and a lockdown, that's not gonna do it. Alright. Looks like we got there in the end. With only three cards to spare. Sweet, on to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is all spot removal and then hopefully find a second blank source for Phyrexian Arena to pull ahead. Give it a shot. Up against a red aggro, so not the best matchup for Arena, but at least our removal is going to be quite useful. And uh, yeah, we can wait on the cutdown. Just have to be careful that our opponent can't enable prowess twice and uh, get the Swiss Spear out of range. I'll just take the one, see if they have some other creature they want to play. And then if they go for a pump spell, we can cut down a response. Alright, end of turn, I'll still go for it. Didn't want to run into a monstrous rage. That's going to be the second main monstrous rage, so at least we didn't take 5 damage. And now we've got a variety of answers lined up, including another cutdown. Could also keep up Gopher the Throat for any 3 mana creature they might play, or just Molten Collapse now. Although Molten Collapse could also deal with a roll token if we can enable Descent somehow, which is not going to be easy. I guess we could just Molten Collapse the Swiss Spear, and then next turn cut down go for the throats and then turn after deploy the Phyrexian Arena hopefully drawing into a Shieldred or Dracosaur. Right, opponents stuck on two lanes there's a Shieldred. Now um, it may not necessarily survive if our opponent's got a bunch of burn spells in hand but we'll find out soon enough. For now I'll commit the Arena and yeah, for opponents firing off a lightning strike here, they're less likely to finish off Shieldred, which can then gain 4 life per turn. Although for now we'll lose a bunch of life. Don't hate Preacher, since that can generate a life linker if it attacks. Let's me keep up Cutdown to answer Phoenix Chick. And then next turn play Shieldred's without too much pressure on the battlefield, hopefully. Preacher can also block Godric if they play it. And then if they use a bunch of burn to take out Preacher, they may not be able to finish off Shieldred. It's gonna be an Ourobrasks Forge, alright, that's not something you see in every red deck. But uh, yeah, we'll be able to handle that. So now we can play Shieldreds. Brotherhood's End, also an answer to the Forge. Could also Dracosaur, to be fair. I'm delaying this Shieldred turn after turn. But uh, yeah, Dracosaur lines up pretty well against the token from Orbrask's Forge. Don't need to worry about a burn spell finishing off our first Striker. And then next turn I can maybe Shieldred and go for the Throat, which is more mana efficient. Just have to watch out that we don't get burnt out by our own Phyrexian Arena. So for now we can just block with a Dracosaur. Is this a Frenzy? Yep, so that would have been a clean answer to Shieldred as well. Yeah, I'll block with the token. Or do I? I guess I may as well attack with it. So we can keep gaining life. Alright, back up Shieldred. So now if they answer the first one it's not a disaster. And then go for the throat, taking out the token could also prevent them from casting a 3 mana frenzy. Token triggers. So it does look like they're maybe setting up a frenzy here. I'll just take out the token now. And then we can Brotherhood's End to destroy the artifact. And then if we gain 4 we should be pretty safe. Another forge, so they're not gonna like my Brotherhood's end. So I guess we can double check here what they're working with. So Godric, Lightning Strike, and that's already enough for a concession. Don't even need to show them at the Brotherhood's end. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. 
And uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable. Just need to hit our land drops and hope to survive until we get to Dracosaur. Put on black white, so we can expect a fair amount of removal. Let's see what we're working with. This is a virtue of loyalty. That could be rough since we don't have a great answer to enchantments. Double cut down, go for the throat preacher. So we'll take go for the throat. And then we've got a couple answers to the preacher. Don't have many creatures that die to the opponent's cut down other than our creature land since our own preachers are 2 4. So that's good to go. For now, we can cut down the token and then Edict deals with Preacher. So that's the plan. But yeah, I really want to keep hitting those land drops. I'll take a Fraxin Arena off the top as well, and wow, there it is. Okay. So that can ensure that we keep hitting our land drops now. And then we're just a red source away from Dracosaur. Alright, I'm sure they've got an answer for the first one. But we've got a few more to follow up. Virtual Persistence plus Cutdown can get it done. That's fine. Still gonna go for Drakosaur over Shieldreds. Bit more mana efficient. And there's Preacher, that's fine. So I don't think the order matters too much. Well, we're swimming in card advantage here. So, play Preacher, play Shieldreds, or we can answer their Preacher so it doesn't get a chance to draw them a card, which is also reasonable. Just play Preacher and then Molten Collapse, or just play another Dracosaur, to be honest. Which can also block their Preacher pretty well. Don't know if I need to play around a 4-mana Sweeper. I don't think our opponent's running Depopulate, so... Let's just go for maximum pressure. So we get to exile four cards. And draw one extra. Oh yes. So I'm just gonna play a land, play Preacher, Molten Collapse, attack all out. And that should pretty much do it. Could also animate our creature land. Although we're technically attacking for lethal if we play shielded afterwards. I guess, yeah, we knew about the cut down, so it wasn't going to be a lethal after all. But I don't think we can really go wrong here. Opponent's gonna fall to three from Shieldred. And then they would pretty much need a Depopulate. And even then, we've got a Restless Vents that can keep up the pressure and another Shieldred. Alright, there's four mana. And looks like our opponent's just too far behind. Can probably see Wandering Emperor here. But the damage has been done.
Alright, sweet. Back up to 20 life, as if nothing ever happened. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's gonna need to draw a few lanes for sure, but uh, we've got a Brotherhood Zen to catch back up, so I'll try it. Facing a red with an Epicure, could be a red-white. In which case, Brotherhood Zen is gonna be incredibly valuable. Just mono red so far. And a Scoundrel. Okay, so double shielded, also gonna do some heavy lifting. Just gotta make sure we don't take too much damage early. I think I still like Pilfer to take an impactful 3-drop or something that we can Brotherhood's end. As opposed to a Shieldred's Edict which just gets rid of an Epicure. Alright, so we see double Godric, still gonna take one of them. And then, yeah, opponent's likely to play Godric next turn. And then we can reset the board with our Brotherhood's end. At 10 life, facing play with fire, so still going to be a bit of an uphill battle. But uh, Shield Root will help, I guess the Wicked Roll also deals us one more damage. Sulphur Springs also makes us lose one if we want to cast Shield Root. Another Scoundrel. Yeah, it's going to be close. Still got to go for it, I think. And then I'll block if they want to use a burn spell to finish off Shield Road, be my guest. Although if they have a Lightning Strike in hand, we're just dead since they can attack, put us to 5 with a Wicked Roll, and then have 5 more points of burn. So let's see if we're dead. A sulfur spring is gonna cost us this game. Looks like it. And yeah, there's a lightning strike. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Missing some of our bombs, but we've got some good interaction. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes. Don't mind picking up uh, Phyrexian Arena here when we have a pretty reactive hand. And it uh, looks like red-white tokens, double knight errands, reinforcements, the only castable spell. Although we're eventually gonna need to grind through these knight errands, so I'm tempted to take one and then we can cut down one of the reinforcements tokens perhaps. Although, then again, I do want to play Phyrexian Arena next turn, and we also have a Gixxus Command to clean up a bunch of small creatures. So it's uh, a lot to think about. Let's just go with the reinforcements and just try to slow them down, and then hopefully we'll find Shieldred and Dracosaur before our opponent can take over with Knight Errant. Because otherwise I could have convoked Knight Errant turn 3 already. And luckily Bunnycorn's still within range of our cutdown. So I'll take a Knight Errant. And cut down Bunnycorn right now. And then we should be in command, literally. Recruiter hit us for 5 damage here. But a Drancosaur now is perfect. And then next turn we can gain life with Gix's command as well as dealing with Warden and Recruiter perhaps. Okay. Could also make them sack all their creatures. So yeah, definitely going for destroy power two or less. Don't think we'll need another Frex Arena. Yeah. 
could also just play a tamped events instead of uh, playing sulfur spring since we have plenty of lands in hand so let's go power two or less and plus one counters and lifelink hit for seven and play the vents And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. A bunch of removal into a shieldred. Facing a red aggro. And that Swiss Spear's not going to get to hit us. And then we wouldn't mind seeing more one drops that we can take out with consumes all. Double shield is also pretty good against rats. So I've heard. So we'll get this going just to eventually get a 3-3. If our opponent didn't have any additional one drops, we're unlikely to see them in the future. A lightning strike going face. That's fine. And an Urabrask's Forge is next, alright, seems popular today. So we're hoping to avoid a Witch Docker Frenzy here. Probably not going to block the token if they attack to play around Lightning Strike. Alright, they're just going to cast a 4 mana Frenzy after all. Okay, we could be in trouble if they answer the second Shieldred as well. <laughs> well, I guess we've got a third now. Let's see how long we can keep playing this game. Another forge. So it should be able to block the 1-1 one, one safely. I guess now we can just block both. Since we don't need to fear a burn spell. And yeah, the vessel is going to keep growing. So forge is kind of awkward. Gain two. Shieldred can attack. We'll keep Vessel back on defense, I think. Yeah, I'll just send Shieldred to keep Vessel back. And then next turn we could send both. We're safe to block. And doesn't matter too much. Could block the two powered creature. But our opponent should die on the way back. And once uh, Shieldred deals two more. And a Dracosaur. Not a bad cherry on top here. But just passing the turn will do it too. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Turn to Edict, turn three. Either deploy a card advantage engine or answer more one drops and take it from there. Facing red white, bivouac typically points towards more mid rangey decks. So having the card drop from Frex and Arena could be important. For now, a market gnome, which we could cut down. Although we'll still draw them a card. Still helps us set up our edict in the future so don't mind cutting down the gnome suppose consumes all could have exiled it so they didn't get any value but i would much rather deploy for Arena or preacher and uh red white could still have get lost to destroy our enchantment so maybe lead with preacher which can also do a bit of damage 
I guess with her opponent gaining one, it actually doesn't draw me a card right away. And it's going to be in a braid, plus another burn spell here to deal with Preacher. Torch. Okay, Phyrex and Arena it is. Hope they don't have an answer to it. And then we just need to hit our land drops for Shieldroot and Drancosaur. It's going to be a Vindicator. Alright, can answer that with an Edict quite nicely. Although I also don't mind deploying Shieldroot. Problem is... We might not have a window to answer the Vindicator anymore with Edict. So the safest play is definitely to just Edict. Also don't want him untapping and being able to animate Bivouac. Although I guess maybe we could have done that play because we also have Cut Down to destroy the Bivouac and then basically deal with both. So I could have waited. Invasion of Kaldheim is definitely spicy here. So opponent likely playing with Pia, which can synergize with exiling cards. And we see Revelry and Duelist. So with Torch the Tower and Duelist, they could answer Dracosaur, which is the most important creature, I would say, to protect. So I think we go Iron Crank plus Shieldred. And then... Probably still keep Iron Crag as an artifact that makes mana as opposed to an equipment. But it's a close call. So they likely spend a turn answering Shieldred. They can play the Duelist and then Torch the Tower to also get the lifelink. But they might want to deploy Revelry. Although well, Revelry doesn't do a whole lot, I guess they can cast it now to get two 1 1s. And that's about it. And that's what he'll do. Can clean those up with Hidatsugu. Brother would send also an answer to the tokens. But uh, definitely prioritize Dracosaur and pass a turn. And then cut down could also be an answer to Duelist or a Pia if that shows up. But pretty much all our sweepers will be effective. So there's Duelist. Yeah, I'll just take my turn, hang on to the cut down. And see what we exile. Another Dracosaurus perfect and a Preacher. So yeah, we can attack. I guess her opponent might have a Wandering Emperor in hand. Which is a reason to just kind of chill with our Dracosaur. Because it did have a pretty mana inefficient turn otherwise. Yeah, I could see that. Just play Dracosaur, play Preacher and pass. And not play into Wandering Emperor, keep leveraging the card advantage from Dracosaur. That's the luxury we have with a card like Dracosaur or Shieldred. We don't have to attack into Wandering Emperor to leverage them. And there's another Vindicator. Pretty good against our Dracosaur, admittedly. Although we could try and find some answers. And we're about to see five extra cards. So... Not unlikely to find an answer to the Vindicator. And Molten Collapse and go for the Throats. Count for sure. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. So yeah, finally got to see the Dracosaur shine here and get to untap with it several turns to give us a massive amount of card advantage as well as eventually closing out the game. So Dracosaur is great against aggro if you can eventually deploy it in time. Against control it's a little bit weaker since they tend to remove it before it gets to give us any card advantage, but uh, of course in any mid rangey matchup if they don't have an immediate answer it can run away with the game very quickly. So all in all this red-black mid range deck certainly has its moments, it's gonna struggle against uh, rampy decks in the format that can go over the top, and control can also be problematic if we don't draw any of our card draw engines and end up drawing too much spot removal, but most of the best of one meta especially is geared towards aggro, so having all that cheap interaction usually pays off, and then shield and dracosaur 
are excellent ways to take over without needing to go to the more expensive six and seven mana cards. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.